We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is, is the Couples, couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Good morning. Good morning. You are watching the Couples Academy show. My name is Lakeisha Hines and I have with me the most profound, deepest brother I have ever met next to Jesus, Hassani and my husband. You know what I'm saying? Like he is the one. He is the truth. Mr. Roland Bradley is in the house today and two of your Avengers are missing today. <laughs> They're missing but not for a bad reason necessarily. It's because Hassani is just doing 50,000 things and Miss Jewel is not feeling well today. So you all sing your prayers and well wishes to Miss Jewel that she feels better today. How are you doing, Roland? How are you feeling? I am doing excellent. I pray all is well on your end also. Um, it's great Tuesday morning, so let's get it. <laughs> That's right. Grand rising, everyone. Listen, what just happened this weekend, Roland? I, I am struggling to find the words to articulate what took place over the weekend at Last Chance Weekend. I was there. You were there. There were some awesome couples that showed up, and I truly believe they had breakthrough. I truly believe there was transformation this past weekend. Um, in spite of the weather, <laughs> it was rainy and muggy and it's so funny because one of the wives actually said it's cleansing the mm. rain is cleansing and i truly believe that the rain washed away some of those past hurts and pains and disappointments and it was just an amazing experience what about you roland what what are your thoughts yeah it, it was amazing and listen last chance weekend for me is always something to look forward to because you see couples come in one way and you see them leave a different way much mm -hmm. better than the way that they came and it's very impactful and if you still on the fence i'm not sure i don't know is it worth it it is well worth the investment because that's what it is. It is an investment into your marriage. It is an investment into yourselves. And it's the best investment more than anything. Currency coin, that coin, other coin. If you invest in your marriage, the thing that God has put together that no man can put asunder, you will not be let down. So the next one is not until 2023 in January. So you have more than enough time to sign up, get in. But this past weekend was amazing. As always, um, we had quite a few couples to come in and it's just life changing as always. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, see, bars rolling all day, bars. <laughs> but I just want to shout out the people who are here today. Hello, Mr. Ben. Daryl, Camille, Callie, power couple. Oh my goodness, Callie, power couple. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. LaShawn, pop it. Team Smith in the house. David, Reginald, Kathy, Slim, Chef Spawn, Margo, and all of you out there who have yet to check in. We want to say thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Make sure you drop your questions in the chat. Don't do us. Y'all don't, don't do us, you know, every time, every time rolling, right? Three minutes left, 25 yeah. questions in the chat. <laughs> yeah. It is virtually impossible to answer 25 questions in three minutes. We cannot do yeah. it. So please drop your questions early because we definitely want to make sure that we address them and give you what you came here to get. Now, Absolutely. on that note, Reginald, you asked where will the na uh, where will the next last chance we can be? Okay, so I think you mean when, because it's always at the same place. It's in Georgia, but it will be January the thirteenth through the fifteenth. January thirteenth through the fifteenth is when the next last chance weekend will be. Go ahead and handle your business, Reginald. Don't wait. Let's get it done. Make that call. Do what you need to do. Get up in there. Um, those of you who came this month 
you are honestly answering the charge, right? I said, who is going to go into 2023 out of misery? <laughs> and the people who show up in December and all the preceding months, they answered that call, man. They said, I don't want to enter into 2023 in misery. So I'm going to say this to you, Mr. Reginald, don't carry out the rest of 2023 in misery. Let's go ahead and handle it in January. Let's get it done. <laughs> All right. But what we're here to talk about today are reasons to not get a divorce. We are actually in our separation and divorce series. And so we're just continuing on with that today. So we're going to start off with our first reason today um, not to get a divorce, but reasons why you might want to is if all you do is fight. And if you are constantly fighting with your spouse or your partner, it will potentially make you want to get a divorce. Why? Because that's not fun. It's exhausting. It's draining. You can never seem to get along. Even little things, little things you start to argue about. And so why is divorce then not the answer? Well, it's not the answer because it's possible to learn how to communicate in a different way, right? It's possible to deal with the root issues that are causing you to argue in the first place. And then we can combat some of that. Sometimes um, when there's a lot of fighting, the both parties or one of the parties might think that it's about love being lost. Like we're fighting all the time because we don't love each, each other anymore. And that could be true. But a lot of times it's not that. It's just that these are habits that we've developed over time. We haven't um, acquired the necessary tools and strategies that we need to be able to communicate effectively. And so because of that, all we know to do is argue. I don't know about you, Roland, but... I, I grew up in an argumentative household. <laughs> and so this is what my parents did. I saw my grandparents do it. And so, you know, for me, it was the norm. But as a child, when you experience that, you realize that, man, this is like stressing me out. Like, I don't want that in my own marriage. I don't want that in my own household. And everything that we say we're not going to do most times is what we end up doing. <laughs> so I had to learn some new patterns. I had to learn some new ways to communicate and to express myself and to get across what it is that, you know, I wanted out of my relationship and get help. Truth be told, had to get help because I wasn't able to handle it by myself. So I don't know. Really and, and, you think you wanted to yeah. And, and a lot of times, a lot of times we have to identify, as you said, those family traits because mm -hmm. while I grew, while you grew up in a argumentative house, I grew up in a silent house. So oh. I became a silent assassin, not mm -hmm. the verbal assassin, the silent assassin. And if you know anything about the silent assassin, it's just as detrimental, if not more dangerous than the verbal assassin. Why? Because I become resentful. I withhold everything. You know, you become stubborn. Snit, and nothing done, nothing progresses, you know, and, and, and a lot of times, you know, one will be fussing or arguing and I'm just literally just sitting there and it's going in one ear and out the other. And so oftentimes we do that and it's agonizing to our spouses, it's agonizing to our um, partners and we are trying to figure out why. And it goes mm -hmm. all the way back to what you were raised with, how things look. You know, and we have to get to the point where we're mature enough to have grown up decent conversations. Mm -hmm. If we're fussing with one another, arguing with one another, that's the first reason we'll say, oh, we not, we, we're not connected anymore. And then we fall mm -hmm. out of love. And then now mm -hmm. we find justification to have bad behavior. And we, we, it's all a setup that is self-inflicted wounds. So mm -hmm. we have to fall back and just be honest and have hard conversations just just mature conversations, let alone hard conversations. And let's talk through some things so we can be able to better connect with one another. Absolutely, Roland. I love it. And Margot makes an excellent point. She said, if we could see eye to eye and listen instead of fussing, we can get past that moment of pain. You are so right, Margot. And what happens is we respond based on how we're feeling in the moment. 
And one of uh, uh, Hassaniism is never share your feelings when you're in your feelings, yeah, right? Yeah, and we yeah. we frequently do that and we mess up every time. I don't care how well of a communicator you are. If you are in your feelings, most likely you're going to say something that you don't mean. You're going to say something that you regret and that you got to go back and now ask for um, forgiveness for. So it's yeah. best if we just take a moment you know, take a beat, <laughs> just pause for a moment and think it through and, and get out of our emotions to the best of our ability before we engage in one of those conversations. All right. OK, next point. If you don't connect anymore. So listen, if you don't connect anymore, what has happened? Work has gotten in the way. The kids are now involved. You know, we have to go all of these different activities, extracurriculum activities, and we have let life take over our lives, right? We have we have let life take over the love that we have for one another, and we mm -hmm. feel disconnected. Now we feel like we're just roommates. We're just two ships passing, sailing by one another, and you have mm -hmm. to learn to anchor and be able to play stop and go, as my mother would say. And, and what she meant was sometimes you have to stop and connect with one another or reconnect with one another so that way that that love is not lost. And a lot of times we have to do things differently. We have to find ways to um, find that place of that happy place that we once were in. And so things have changed. We have we have changed. We have matured and 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 have learned new things. We have to be able to express those new things, find new things, and there's a whole plethora of information out there today that we didn't have five years ago, ten years ago. You know, and so we can always be creative and be intentional on connecting with one another. And if nothing else sit down and have a conversation to express what you like, mm -hmm. what you like now, and, mm -hmm. and take that, write it down. And so now you can work around that because now I know what direction to go in. But a lot of times, because we're just passing one another, we're not connected, we're not paying attention to one another, we don't know what you like anymore. The things that you used to like, you don't like anymore. So now <laughs> when I try to do those things, now, you know, well, I try. And, and it doesn't go the way that we want it to go. We don't get the outcome that we were expecting. And now mm -hmm. we don't do anything. And so mm -hmm. now we're more disconnected. And so we have to find a way to circle back around mm -hmm. and, and, and tap into one another's feelings, tap into one another's thoughts. And we have to communicate to do that. Going back to communication, we have to communicate to do that in okay. order to, to uh, stay connected and reconnect if necessary. For sure. For sure. And I love um, Slim 1515. Um, Slim says a lot of people listen to respond and not to understand. And that is so true. Like, I don't know how many of you did double Dutch when you were younger. Like I, I'm telling my age now, I did double Dutch when I was younger. And you know, with double Dutch, you know, you got two people swinging the ropes, right? And there's somebody on the outside waiting, you know, waiting to get in, waiting to get in. And that's how I used to be like waiting for my husband to pause so that I could jump in and respond to what he was saying instead of really just being present in the moment and just listening. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's really, really mm -hmm. difficult, especially if that's what you're accustomed to doing. And that's the model that was presented for you. It is different, which leads to Renee's point, I grew up in a home where my parents were passive aggressive as well as argumentative. I fell mm -hmm. into the cycle and it is hard to break even though I try and want to. Renee, I feel you. I'm telling you, like, again, that was the environment. That was uh, what you were taught growing up. But just because that was what you experienced as a child is not necessarily what you have to continue as an adult. You get to make a choice. You get to decide if that's how you're going to continue to be or if you are willing and ready and available to be teachable, right? That's something we talk about all the time here at Cubs Academy. Like you must be teachable, trainable. You must want to learn because ultimately what we're trying to do is get you to be the best version of yourself humanly possible that is the goal that's the goal and here we go <laughs> come on gonzalez he says to connect 
we had to pause, reset and rewind, then resume to reconnect properly to communicate effectively. What? Come on, Gonzalez. Yes. Listen, I don't have the motherboard <laughs> I'm like a funny, but I need you to understand that was a bomb drop right there. Absolutely. It was. For sure. For sure. Thank you, Gonzalez. I mean, he's so right. And it really is about pausing and resetting and like reevaluating, reviewing what it is that you said and what you were doing and understanding what we need to do to be able to reconnect so that we can communicate effectively. So you guys, we're going to take a brief, brief break and we will come back and give you guys the rest of these tips. I think it's so important again, that we <clears throat> make sure that we are not looking for reasons to leave, but we're looking for reasons to stay. That's what's most important. Look for reasons to stay and not for reasons to leave. So again, we'll take a brief break and we'll be right back to give you some more of these reasons why people divorce. You're watching the Couples Academy show. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Couples Academy app. The Couples Academy app is your go-to hub for how to do marriage right. Get started with our app today by perusing our amazing features that conveniently allow you to connect. This app is packed with powerful content and resources to help you grow and stay connected. With this app, you can watch our messages, find marriage resources, watch, listen, and read the real-life stories of restored couples, sign up for events, read articles and blog posts, stay up to date with push notifications, share your favorite messages via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or email, and download messages for offline listening. For more information about the Couples Academy app, Go to couplesacademy.org. Welcome back. Welcome back. You're watching the Couples Academy show and we are talking about um, separation and divorce. This is a series that we're in and it continues on today. If you just got here, I need you to scroll through this feed if you are capable, because I know you're on multiple streaming platforms. I don't know where you are, right? How you're watching. But I need you to find this comment that Brother Gonzalez just dropped up in here. I mean, it was like literally a perfect segue into our next point. But while we were on our break, there was another comment that was posted that I really want to share because I think it will resonate with most of you here. And it's from DWW. Roland spoke about men taking the lead in their marriages last night. I have been on the fence in regards to separation and divorce, partly because my husband doesn't seem to want to learn how to lead in love. It seems that he thinks just telling me he loves me more than words can express is enough. 
And so this literally is talking about communication, right? Him verbally saying to you that he loves you, but you're looking for the action behind the words. But I want to talk about communication a little bit. And then Roland, if you want to chime in, because I wasn't there last night. So <laughs> if you want to touch, touch that, you definitely can. Please feel free to do so. But the third uh, reason for divorce that you know, we'll come up with couples a lot of times as if they don't communicate. And I want to add on to that because there are levels to communication, right? Sometimes people are not talking at all, um, or they're only talking about the business of the, uh, of the relationship, right? And they're just handling the things that need to be handled, the bills and the children and the, the that type stuff, but they're not going deeper with their communication. Sometimes it literally is we're communicating, but we're not communicating effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. So there are layers and there are levels to this communication, right? But we know, Roland, we know that communication is probably the most single important thing in a relationship, but we are paying so little attention to it. Like we really don't take the time to learn how to communicate effectively. One of the things that I learned the hard way is that communication literally is a two-way street. And I would be lecturing right? And not giving my husband an opportunity to respond or to share what he was thinking or what he was feeling because I was doing all of the communicating. And, you know, I told myself, I'm an excellent communicator. I don't understand. Like, it has to be you, right? Because I know what I'm doing when it comes to communication, you know? And so one day he said to me, I kid you not, he said to me, just because you talk a lot, does not mean that you're a great communicator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> but he's right. He's yeah. right. The person who often talks a lot automatically assumes that they're a great communicator because they got a lot of words and they know how to string words together and they know how to use analogies and do all of these things. But at the end of the day, if it's not resonating with your spouse or the person who you're speaking to, all of that eloquent conversation, communication, your beautiful words means nothing if it's not resonating with them, if they're not getting understanding, if they don't feel a deeper connection to you after you've communicated. And most importantly, if you're not resolving the issues, it means nothing. What say you, Roland? Well, it's a, I guess you can call it an oxymoron because it's the craziest thing. Communication does not have anything to do with your talking. Communication <laughs> right. has everything to do with the person listening. Can you yes. understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, right? And so, so oftentimes, because we're talking and we 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 going on and on and on, and as you said, you know, so eloquently putting together our words. If the person does not understand what you're saying, you're not communicating. <laughs> communicating is being able to express something, and the person that you're expressing it to understands what you're saying. And so we talk, we talk. We talk we don't have spaces to communicate, to talk and to listen or to be heard. And, and that's why there's always the breakdown of you just don't understand me. You know, we can't talk. We can't we can't have this conversation anymore because is dominating the, the area of what should be a dialogue of communicating. And dialogue is being able to say something, I hear what you say, and I'll be able to respond. Not just because I'm saying it, I'm saying it, I'm saying it, I'm communicating. Mm -hmm. No, we're, we're, we're defeating the purpose of why we are sitting in front of one another, listening to one another, talking to one another, because it's not serving any, neither, it's not serving either one of us um, at all. So communicating is more about listening than it is about talking talking. Mm, and so when mm. we get to the point of understanding what the person is saying, then we mm. can have a better line of, of commission. Um, I, I do want to address uh, DWW um, about last night. So we had our foundation call and we have to understand that as men, we are responsible for the direction that our family is going. We are responsible for how the, the temperature, the tone for our relationships, our marriages, our families, what that looks like. And though we don't get it right all the time, but we shouldn't get it wrong all the time either. 
And in and, and doing that, we have to learn and be willing to lead. And if we don't know how to, because the, the first excuse we give is that, well, I didn't have an example in front of me. My, mm-hmm. I didn't grow up with my dad. I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, my uncle raised me or my, my grandfather. You have more than enough examples now, more than enough resources now to tap into another man who is doing it the way that you want it to be done or where that your family needs it to be done in order for you to be able to do it as well. Yes. Right? It's no respect the person, but we get so prideful and, you know, nobody can't tell me anything or I got mm-hmm. it going on or because I make a few dollars over rent, you know, we thinking that we got it all together and you really don't because, you know, as much as you think you have it together, your family will tell you by how they show up, not by how you show up. So, yeah. brother, I want to let you know that you have a piece of tissue paper on your shoe. OK, so get yourself together, reach out to somebody that can help and let's get it going. <laughs> so that way you can, you know, lead your family in the right way. Yes, sir. I'm about to say amen. <laughs> to say amen and pass the collection please <laughs> yes sir absolutely man i Tef, uh tiffany i see you i see you um i see you talking about your relationship and saying that you don't know if your marriage could be saved and you know you go on to say that you want to go so bad but he said he's not paying the money to go and you're talking about um, last chance weekend, which I understand that. And uh, you said you do want to do it. He stated he's not ready to go to counseling or a last chance weekend. He at one point was interested and now he's not. You're not sure how to get him to go. Even Hassani has tried to reach him to no avail. You know, Tiffany, this is the hard truth, sis. We cannot control anyone but ourselves. We are not responsible for anyone but ourselves. And true healing and transformation does not come about until action is put in. You know, there's effort put in. God will not step in until we step out. Additionally, additionally, um, healing is a choice. And we have to choose to heal. We all have a decision. God is a gentleman. He is not going to force himself on anyone. We have to invite him into our individual lives. We have to invite him into our marriage. And he is not going to bust his way up in there. He That's just not what he does. And so we have to welcome him and we have to invite him. So I'm going to say this to you. Focus on yourself right now get the healing that you need that you need what we have found at times when couples are in a situation like this where one is ready and one wants to do the work and the other one's like you know not quite ready or whatever um one spouse will begin to do the work work on themselves they start transforming then the other spouse looks and says "Hmm, i see a change in you i want to see some of that and that same thing about our faith when we truly begin to change our lives and truly start living for God and we have joy and peace in our heart and our spirit and other people look like there's something different about you. What is it? When you begin, then the door is open for you to minister to that person and to witness to them because they see a change in you. So change begins with you. And I will say, focus on yourself. Focus on getting yourself the healing that you need and, you know, just trust God to deal with your husband and just trust that, you know, and be praying for your husband. That's something else. Make sure that you're praying for him as you're going through your own personal healing and transformation. But reach out. I mean, we work with um, spouses all the time. We do couples work, of course, but we do work with individuals as well. So you may need to just reach out to get help for yourself right now. What say you, Roland? Yeah, you said it all. I mean, once we start working on ourselves and once we start focusing on ourselves and we have to go to God and God is much greater than our husbands or our wives, much greater than our issues in our marriages. He is definitely the one that can um, take a dead situation and bring it back to life again. And so we have to be willing to go to him in all things and let him do his perfect work. 
Um, as you said, if we get out of the way and let God get in the way, then there is no other way, right? And so when we do that, uh, Tiffany, just be encouraged, just uh, uh, remain prayerful and, and watch God do his perfect work. Yeah, and I just want to say, um, Gonzalez dropped in the chat, unearth Tiffany. I mean, unearth would be perfect for you right now because it's really about you and it's not about your spouse. It's about your own individual um, healing and transformation. Um, I'm going through it right now. Actually, <laughs> it's like ending this week. So a new new class is about to start and this would be a perfect time for you to jump on, Tiffany. So please make that discovery call um, and, and sign up for Unearth and get the help that you need, sis. Um, I, I think that that's what's most important right now. So I see questions in the chat. However, we are out of time <laughs> and we told you not to do this. <laughs> but guess what? We will be back tomorrow. So save your questions for tomorrow as we continue this series about separation and divorce. Hopefully you guys got something out of this today and are one step closer to making a decision. Ultimately, you know, we're fighting for your marriage and we hope that you will decide to stay together and not go this route at the same time, you know, we understand everybody doesn't want to do the work. And that's the truth. Any relationship minus abuse, right? Physical abuse, you're not safe, that type of thing, right? But as long as none of those things are there, any marriage can be salvaged. It's just both parties have to be willing to show up and do the work. So I want to say thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. We will be right back here tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you watch SOS tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time while I'm breaking down how to help you save your bedrooms, all right? So you all have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll see you tonight.